So you've had the opportunity to look over the menu now as it sits in front of you. Uh, the concept is fall. Uh, if you've been here before, um, welcome back. If you haven't, uh, I look forward uh, to uh, hopefully uh, you guys enjoying yourselves. Uh, seeing this room full every time uh, is a true honor for myself and my staff. You guys trust in me uh, and my crew in the front of the house uh, to be able to sit here. Uh, really shows how much you guys trust in us and how much you appreciate what we're going to do for you guys tonight. It means the world for me and my staff. Just want to let you guys know that. So thank you. actually raised on an orchard and my grandmother had a couple per symmetry so they're very near and dear to me so we reduce those down into a jam something for you to kind of pull the meat off of that skewer dip into that jam you got some sweet you got some savory you got a lot of nice texture there as well just a little kind of a snack just to get the meal rolling Pinot Gris which is uh, in French it's rich round and aromatic while Pinot Grigio in Italy is simple crisp and refreshing. See, hopefully everybody's enjoying. It's a uh, toasted chestnut bisque. Uh, oh, chestnuts, uh, we all know, are all over the place throughout the holidays. You see them on Thanksgiving menus and the stuffing. You see them on Christmas menus as an hors d'oeuvre. Uh, I find them very, very tasty uh, and very useful. Uh, and obviously implement them into this bisque. Uh, there's a little bit of onion in there. There's a little bit of... Um, uh, candied garlic in there, uh, just to kind of sweeten it up a little bit, kind of cut through that texture. Uh, acorn squash, we all know squash is prevalent also, you see them on the tables, you'll see them on next Thursday, you'll see them throughout the course of the fall season. Uh, we made a little kind of soft and uh, chewy tater tot with that. Uh, a little bit Delicious. crunchy on the outside, nice and fried, uh, warm and molten on the inside, just to add a little bit of flavor, a little bit of contrast to that really kind of smooth and creamy bisque. And then holding it all together on the back is a little bit of micro celery. Don't be afraid to mix it in the soup as well. It's got a really sharp celery flavor to it. It'll really kind of freshen up the you know, heavier bisque. Uh, then some fresh cinnamon oil uh, just on top. We steep some oil for about 48 hours and some warm cinnamon sticks just to really kind of accentuate those holiday notes in the soup itself. So continuing thing on our fall slash New England theme. We've got a cheddar called Grafton Hill. It's out of Vermont. They do a raw, unpasteurized cheddar that they smoke with the leaves and the branches of the maple tree. Some mustard seeds, obviously nice and sweet. Cheese is nice and salty. Textures go together well. In the top right corner, just to kind of add some extra sweetness and texture, is that honeycomb. Had that flown down from Vermont as well. Um, take that, smear it on the bread, spray it onto the endive that sits underneath that cider reduction. Uh, it's all made to be played uh, nicely in the sandbox together. You can mix and match all those flavors, textures, um, and temperatures as well. Uh, but I think it's a really nice, fun play on a fall cheese course, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. So we made a stock out of that beer with some fresh herbs and some garlic, cinnamon sticks, and we braised out that pheasant uh, so we can shred it out. As you see, it's nice and tender, almost like a play on chicken and waffles. Took some pumpkin, roasted it, pureed it, made our own homemade whole wheat waffle batter with some fresh fried sage. So you have a pumpkin sage waffle. You've got that slow oatmeal porter braised pheasant. Made a little gremolata on top, or a little crunch, a little texture out of figs. Uh, toasted almonds uh, and some sage as well. So you got some texture, you've got that braising liquid underneath, nice dark oatmeal porter style. Probably hasn't been out of the water more than 48 hours. Uh, it's incredibly fresh. Uh, we crisp the skin up nice. Um, I'm sure a lot of you saw the menu when you walked in and saw pork pudding, and I'm sure a little light went off your head. You're like, mm, pork pudding, that doesn't really make much sense. Um, but where I come from, and I'm sure a lot of you would agree, if you really think about it, New England area, they pair seafood and pork together constantly. You think about clam chowder with bacon in it. You think about a lobster boil with sausage in it. It happens all the time. So that was the thought process behind what we did here. So you've got that cranberry caramel, that crispy skin striped bass, some heirloom carrots, that nice cool fatty pork head cheese, um, and a little bit of the puree underneath to kind of pull it all together. I uh, really hope you enjoy this one. Uh, I think it's we got 
got Macintosh apples, you see scooped into a ball. I uh, took it an extra step and added some Granny Smith apples as well for a little bit of a different texture. Obviously they're a lot more tart. Obviously they're fantastic this time of year. Uh, and poach them in a little bit of simple syrup with some citrus. Obviously a lot of times you see lemon or lemon zest and apple pies. Uh, and some orange juice. Nice and soft. You got those two different colored, two different textured, two different flavored apples. Uh, instead of putting a pie crust or a pie dough over it, we made our own pie dough. Rolled it in front, almost like a donut. Nice and dense on the inside, crunchy on the outside. Tossed it in some cinnamon and sugar so you've got some texture. So you've got the crust, you've got the apples, you've got that bourbon butterscotch underneath. Kind of pull it all together. Um, vanilla ice cream was a no-brainer. Um, that just kind of goes hand in hand. And just, just for some flair, just for a little bit of heightened texture. We made an apple flavored sugar that we blew into a glass dome just to add some contrast, just so you can have some visual appeal. You can crack it and eat it. It's actually incredibly delicious. It's got more apple flavor than you could probably possibly imagine. You guys know I always incorporate my team. I always tell you to stop and talk to my team. Uh, absolutely not 1% of any of this happens without them tonight. Uh, they're the driving force behind the team. Thank you.